The most important crisis facing our planet today is climate change. Through the burning of fossil fuels and other non-renewable sources of energies, the Earth has been subject to pollution from a variety of places and technologies. With this pollution comes rising ocean levels and temperatures, devastating environmental effects and toxic smog in high population areas creating a surge in respiratory illnesses. How can we stop the damage we're doing and work towards a cleaner, brighter future? Many look to renewable sources of energy as an answer, but one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases has yet to join the Clean Energy Initiative. Automobiles Automobiles account for 70% of carbon monoxide emissions in the US alone, and transportation as a whole is responsible for 14% of all greenhouse gas emissions across the globe. Something has to change. Many people have worked towards powering cars in a cleaner, safer way. Electric and hybrid vehicles are gaining popularity and show a lot of promise. However, despite their inherent advantages, there are still many negatives to electric cars. They require long recharge periods, currently they're very expensive, and only a few companies make or are looking to make affordable options for the masses. In addition, the lack of recharge stations makes the electric option very limited for many users. To tackle the problem directly and make a significant impact on the use of gas-powered vehicles, we need to look for a more drastic solution. Fuel cell technology. Fuel cells are electrochemical power sources, like batteries. They harness a chemical's potential energy in a safe and clean way through chemical reactions. Their advantages include being clean and reliable sources of energies. They produce little to no noise pollution and they have an almost instant refueling time like gas cars. Because of their rudimentary technological basis, there are a wide variety of fuel cell technologies being researched and developed. But let's take a look at one of the more popular ones being applied to road vehicles today, hydrogen fuel cells. More scientifically referred to as proton exchange membrane fuel cells or PEM fuel cells, hydrogen fuel cell technology is one of the most promising alternatives to petroleum driven future. As the name states, these fuel cells use hydrogen as their power source and break down hydrogen gas in the cell to harness its potential energy. These cells work differently than others by utilizing a special polymer membrane that acts as an electrolyte to carry electrically charged particles from one electrode in the cell to the other. The cell can separate hydrogen into a proton and an electron and generate electrical power with water vapor as the only emission. These individual cells are placed into large bundles of cells called a stack and are wired together to produce electrical energy. But despite the promising results and growing use in commercial areas of PEM fuel cells, there are however some glaring flaws to this brand of cell. Firstly, hydrogen gas as a substance is extremely volatile and dangerous to handle. Hydrogen assumes a gaseous state across a wide range of temperatures and thus requires special storage precautions and fueling stations. Aside from that, hydrogen is extremely flammable and creates violent explosions when exposed to air. In addition, hydrogen fuel cells have a very low tolerance for contaminants in the fuel source, as the polymer membrane, which is very sensitive, can break down when exposed to foreign substances. As such, only extremely pure hydrogen can be used in a fuel cell. This wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that hydrogen does not exist in a pure state in nature and must be extracted from a compound containing hydrogen by other processes. These processes, such as water electrolysis, the use of enzyme, or fuel reformers, also require a significant amount of energy and because of this, hydrogen is near energy neutral, meaning the energy required to produce hydrogen is almost equal to the amount of energy hydrogen produces making the net energy output very low. Furthermore, PEM fuel cells producing more than one kilowatt of energy require a compressor to provide the oxygen used in the generation process and pumps to remove the water vapor generated in the cell. All these additional loads end up consuming about 30% of the energy created by the fuel cell. And all in all, the hydrogen fuel cell is very dangerous, costly, and inefficient. So ultimately, it's not a feasible solution. However, as mentioned earlier, there are a wide variety of fuel cells and there's another possible candidate from saving the world from the polluted future. DMFCs, or direct methanol fuel cells. DM fuel cell technology is quite similar to PEM fuel cell tech, but instead of accepting only pure hydrogen, the cell works off of a liquid methanol solution, making it easier and safer to refuel as opposed to handling gas. Additionally, methanol is widely accessible and can be obtained from a variety of sources including still abundant fossil fuels, as well as wood, buried biomass, municipal waste, and chemical recycling. Current gasoline storage tanks can also be fitted with a new lining to accommodate methanol storage for a relatively inexpensive price. Methanol also boasts an incredibly high energy density, higher than even compressed hydrogen and 15 times higher than lithium-ion batteries. In addition, they require no peripherals such as pumps or compressors to operate. Now, to understand some of the differences between PEM and methanol fuel cells, we have to take a closer look at the chemistry and reactions behind this brand of fuel cell type. 
Universally, all fuel cells are composed of two electrodes, a catalyst and electrolyte. The anode receives fuel, methanol in this case, from one side, and the cathode collects oxygen from the atmosphere on the other side. The catalyst, generally platinum, breaks the methanol and water solution down into hydrogen cations, which are essentially protons, carbon dioxide, and electrons. The oxygen on the other side of the cell is also ionized with the catalyst at the cathode, but instead assumes an O2- charge. The hydrogen cations and the carbon dioxide are allowed to flow through the electrolyte, a membrane made of naphion material, between the two electrodes and bond the oxygen anions at the cathode. Meanwhile, the electrons initially separated from the hydrogen atoms follow a circuit instead and power a load along the way, producing the electrical energy generated by the fuel cell. After performing work, the electrons rejoin the bonded hydrogen cations, carbon dioxide, and oxygen anions to produce H2O and a very small amount of carbon dioxide, which subsequently exits the fuel cell. Now, to understand the specific reaction equations occurring in the fuel cells, we must first understand oxidation and reduction reactions. Quite simply, an oxidation reaction produces electrons, while a reduction reaction consumes them. In an overall equation, a redox reaction, both must be present because electrons cannot exist alone in the environment. At the anode side of the cell, an oxidation reaction takes place, producing the electrons that will do work. Conversely, on the cathode side, a reduction reaction takes place when the electrons rejoin the rest of the compounds. The overall reaction can be written as such. Now that we have a good understanding of how a direct methanol fuel cell works, we can take a look into how it's implemented inside a vehicle. First of all, the diagrams shown earlier are of only one cell. In commercial uses, these cells are bundled together on top of each other to form what is called a stack. This is because one cell only produces about 1.16 volts of energy. In a vehicle, a fuel cell stack acts as a substitute for the traditional internal combustion engine. A key difference between a fuel cell and an ICE is that the fuel cell generally does not transmit energy directly to the drivetrain and thus moves the wheel as an ICE would via crankshaft and other internal components. Instead, the fuel cell charges a central battery in the car and that battery provides power to electric motors which in turn move the wheels. Because of this, the cell is only operational when the battery needs to be charged and increases the cell's lifetime. Because fuel cells can wear out very quickly, there are systems in place in many fuel cell based cars and trucks to provide energy in case the cell cannot, such as solar powers and regenerative braking systems. Currently, the AMFC technology is a promising yet underdeveloped facet of fuel cell research. Many believe that although methanol has a high energy density, its low but long lasting power output is better served in portable applications. The biggest hindrance affecting direct methanol fuel cell tech is its low efficiency when compared to other cells. However, methanol is still by far the safest and most accessible source of hydrogen, and research is being done into increasing the efficiency of the hydrogen ionization process and applying the technology on a larger scale. Hopefully, in the near future we can live in a cleaner, methanol-driven world.